Hello, hello, hello. I am on my way to go over to Tanya's house. It is 11.40 p.m. She's going to bed in like, she says she's gonna be in bed in an hour. Alex, I just got off my live stream. Alex is on the phone with his friend Sarah. He has two friends named Sarah and they both live in LA. His best friend Sarah, and then this is like a really good friend Sarah that he used to work with, and she got married and her husband's a doctor and he relocated to LA. And she just had a baby about six months ago. So they are so having a FaceTime date <laughs> where they FaceTime each other and talk. So I was just talking to her. She actually, I was showing her like some of the products that I, <laughs> some of my lip plumpers and she was like, Oh, Peter, she was like, you should get the Dior uh, chapstick and lip plumper. You can get it at Nordstrom or Saks. And she was like, it's my favorite. And she was like, I love it. It's the only thing I use. And I have my Crystal Light lemonade. Then I'm taking it over to Tanya's. We're going to sit on our patio for a little bit. And then I'll probably finish vlogging. And then I'm going to go home. I was sitting out. I did my live stream outside. It is 80 degrees currently. I mean, even right now, it's like at 1140. It's 80 degrees. It's so hot. Um, it's wonderful. There's like a little bit of a breeze outside, so it's hot, but it like feels fantastic. So, um, I really want to, I, I really want to finish the audiobook tonight so I can put up my review video of it tomorrow before the live stream on Sunday. Um, so if I don't finish it tonight, I'm going to have to get up tomorrow and finish it. And, um, I was ahead of myself and now I'm kind of like a half an hour behind. But then I'm going to take a shower and just, I might do a face mask tonight and just relax and read and that kind of stuff. Um, Alex is like trying to decide if he's going to go boating tomorrow with a friend of his. Um, and I was invited too, but I don't really feel like it. The reason why is it's a bunch of these girls that he works with. I mean, it would, it's, it'd be okay, but like, it's gonna be like drinking stuff, and I just don't know that I really wanna do that. So, he hasn't decided if he's gonna do it yet or not. He's like, I kind of wanna go, I kinda of don't wanna go. And he was like, do you wanna go? And I was like, no, not really. If I wanna go boating, I'll go to my dad's house. Um, you know, like when you do something like forever, like when you're younger, like you kinda of take it for granted, but you do it so much, you kinda of burn out on it. Like. I mean, I grew up at my dad's house, and he. All, I took my friends out boating every weekend in the summer, every day in the summer. I just don't love it, you know? Plus, where they all go boating here is this area called Geist, and it's just like, like cocktail cruising is what they call it. And they just drive around, and everybody looks at each other and talks to each other and has drinks and stuff. It's just whatever. So, tomorrow, I don't know what I am going to be doing. Um... I have some videos that I want to film, so I may do that. I just want to really have like a relaxing day. If he does that, he told me it's only from like one to four, like they're only going out there for like two or three hours, so. Um, and then we'll probably do something early tomorrow evening. He has to be at our friend's house at 7.30 on Sunday morning, 7.30 or six, it might be 6.30 he said, to go to the race. Um, it, the race, so this is the Indy 500 race this weekend. It is like, um, takes like two and a half plus hours to get what would normally take like 20 minutes. Um, because the traffic is so horrendous. And then when you get there, it's like a two mile walk from parking to the gate, and then once you get inside the 500 racetrack speedway, it is like another, like to go to the snake pit where they're going to see like the DJs, it's like another two to three mile walk. And um, so I'm going to the casino tomorrow night with Lori, and I told Alex, I said, I'm gonna stay as late as I want, because I get to sleep in all day on Sunday, and I won't be going to brunch, so um, I'm gonna do that on Sunday. And I'll probably just go and, I don't know, get some bagels or something for myself. There's this place in Indianapolis called, why does it look like that? It looks weird. There's this place in Indianapolis called Bagel Fair. It's like right up the street from us. And it's this little local owned, uh, locally owned bagel shop. And it is so adorable. And um, I mean, they literally have just like juice and bagels. And then you go in there and you can like, they put huge chunks, uh, chunks of cream cheese on there. 
They're like the be best bagels in the entire world. But like a bagel with cream cheese toasted and everything, you can get anything you want on it is literally like $1.99. Like it's super cheap. And um, I haven't been there in a long time. They have like this old, like the grandma like sits in there and she's probably like 85 and she sits in a chair and she doesn't talk to anybody and she's real surly. And that's part of what I love about it. <laughs> it's the personality of the place. I mean, it's just real plain. It's just you go in and they have bagels and like that's it. So maybe I'll go on Sunday and get a bagel and some coffee. I want to start getting the, the paper to do the crossword too. I haven't done that in a long time. I used to do the crossword every day. Today was a fantastic day. Um, I went in and I wrote for a little while. And then I went and got my oil changed. And then after that, it only took like 15 minutes. And then after I got my oil changed, I went um, to Tanya's kennel and I hung out with her for a little while. And then um, it was so beautiful. We just sat on the front swing and swing, <laughs> swing and swang. I got in coffee. Somewhere in there I got coffee. So, um, that was fun. And then, after that, I went to Kiehl's and Lush at the Fashion Mall and got some stuff for this haul video that I've been putting together. And the people at Kiehl's and Lush were so nice. I'm gonna give them a shout out in the video that I do, but they were really nice. Their names were, at Kiehl's, it was Rachel and Lake. And, uh, at Lush, it was Haley, who helped me before, and um, Sydney, and they were so nice, and they helped me so much, and I got a bunch of stuff, and I'm, like, obsessed with Lush, but really, I got stuff that I needed from there, and at Kiehl's, I just got two things, so I didn't spend a lot of money at Kiehl's. Um, I didn't spend a lot of money at Lush, either. I just got, like, things that I had, like, already, like, I needed to replace like shampoo and conditioner because I had already used it. And let's see, what did I do after that? After Oh, after that I went to Barnes and Noble and um, looked around for a little bit and they didn't have like a ton that I wanted. I want to get a Mira Grant book and she writes like books like, uh, the one I have is called Feed, but the um, they're really big. They're kind of like the hot zone meets like Michael Crichton books is what I've heard. Um, she's a new one out, something about drowning. It's really long though. And so I'm thinking about getting on an audible. I looked and it's on audible. So I may get that for our vacation, except it's about sea creatures. And I don't know that I want to read about sea creatures when I'm getting in the ocean. And then after Barnes and Noble, I was going to go home and pre-film a bunch of videos. I was in such a great mood today to just make videos. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to go home. And um, I ate a little bit of lunch of what I had left over. I this, like, vegetarian um, cheeseburger that was made from, like, nuts. It was actually really good. And um, then I watched Family Feud because I'm obsessed with Game Show Network right now. And then I took the dogs outside. And, oh, the do we took a nap. That's what we did. We took a nap for like an hour and a half. And then Alex got home. And Alex and I sat around and we like talked for like an hour and about our day and about his day. And we looked at Instagram pictures. He looked so hot today. He wore like denim shorts, um, like tighter denim shorts. I think he put a picture on his Instagram if you want to see it. And then he wore like a button down, like denim, you know, like cow like Western shirt pearl buttons, tucked in. He wore his Louis Vuitton belt. And then he wore penny loafers. He looked so good. And, um, so we sat around, we talked for a while, and then I was getting ready to do a live stream at, like, 9.30. And he went outside to talk to our neighbor, Laura. But when he went out there, our other neighbors are home for the weekend. They're, like, they don't come home very often. They actually have, like, other people that stay there sometimes and stuff. And they aren't very, they're they're like, mm, maybe every other weekend or something like that they come home because their kids live here. And so they were there and Alex went over and uh, like drank a beer on their porch with them. So, you know, being real neighborly and stuff. 
And then I did my live stream, and then I called Tanya, and I said, do you really, because she had said in my live stream that she didn't want a fountain pop. And I said, do you really not want, not want a fountain pop? She's like, no, I just bought all this patio furniture at Home Depot, come and see my couch and sit on my back patio. So I was like, okay, I'll come over there and I'll sit in your patio and drink a little lemonade. I'll bring my lemonade, B-Y-O-B, B-Y-O-L, bring your own lemonade. That's what you do when you're sober. <laughs> And we'll sit out there, and it'll be nice. And the bugs are already thick as shit this summer. I was doing that live stream, I was getting eaten alive by bugs. I was getting all my books together that I wanna read this summer. I don't even know why I was doing it. I know I won't read half of them, but. I was like, I wanna read this, and I wanna read this, and I wanna read this, and I wanna read this. I was getting all excited about it. It kind of felt like going to the library. <gasps> Maybe I'll go to the library tomorrow. I haven't been to the library forever. I don't even care if I take stuff out at the library. I just love to go to the library. There's just something about it. And there's something about reading a book from the library that I almost enjoy more than owning a book. I know that sounds crazy, but there just is. There's something about the library. I love the library so much. If you guys are not library patrons, you need to go and you need to get library cards. One of these days, libraries will be non-existent, I believe, in our country. Um, but I will tell you what's interesting about libraries is that one of the things that's interesting about libraries is, yes, okay, is that when you, if you, I go to one that's like a smaller one that's like our, um, like our township. It was actually the library that I went to growing up as a kid. Isn't that funny? Well, one of them until we moved. But the one that I go to was my mom went to Butler University for a master's degree. So she was able to use this library because it was in that township. And so um, I used to go to this one when we were growing up because my mom liked this, li this library more. And so that's where I go to this and it's exactly the same you guys inside when I go the kids section the adult section every the the stacks everything are I mean it is exactly the same as when I was a kid and I went in there I love it I love shit that doesn't change sometimes you know but anyway um what was I gonna say oh when I uh when I go in there you guys it doesn't matter if it's 10 o'clock in the morning or if it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon or if it's a weekend or whatever. It is still always packed. Always. Always with a T on the end. <laughs> always packed. Now, I will say this. A lot of the people that are in there are using the computers. Like, they're not really looking at books. Because, <laughs> you know, you can get on the computer for free if you go to the library and all that kind of stuff. But... There's all kinds of free stuff through the library. They have all kinds of seminars and services. And the library is like one of the most underutilized free services in every city. Did you know that? Go get a library card. It's free. Okay. You don't have to show any kind of driver's license. I think you do have to. I don't even know if you have to show a driver's license. You just have to show something with your address on it. You don't have to show, you know, any credit card or anything. And then. And you can use online services too. They have audiobooks online because there's this program called uh, Overdrive, I think is what it's called. You can, it's an app you can download and then you just go in there and put your library in. And, you, and I didn't know about this, so Overdrive is what it's called. And you can, um, I put the air on, it's freezing in here now. And see, I turned it off, now I'm hot <laughs> in two seconds. Um, but you can get audiobooks, you can get ebooks. You can reserve books at the library, the actual library. There's all kinds of things you can do. Are the deer out tonight? Hello, deer. Are you out? They're not out. The deer honestly do not really like to come out on nights like this. I don't ever see them on like warm summer nights like this. It's always like rainy, cold nights that the deer are out. Do you guys wanna see the road? I'm driving on. This is so pretty. Look at that. It reminds me of like that that TV show, The First True Crime. Look, what do you think goes on down that road down there? Oh, there is a deer right there. Oh my god. You guys can't see it, can you? Shit. If I back up, will you be able to see it, or will he? Oh, 
I like want to show him, but I don't think I can. <gasps> He's running away. Damn it. Well, there's usually four more where there's... He was down that road, that little... Oh, he was down in there. You guys are like, Peter, we do not care. Well, I care. Deer are my spirit animals. And they're usually never by themselves. There's usually a bunch of them. I can't believe that he was all alone. There's always fox and coyote through here, too. Anyway, I don't even know what I was saying before that. You guys are like, Peter, damn it, you're in the middle of a story. What was I saying? I don't remember. These dreams go on when it's cold outside. Every moment I'm awake. Do you guys like Anna and Nancy Wilson of Heart? I love them so much. Oh, I was talking about the library. <laughs> How did I just remember that from that? I have no clue. Um, I love the library so much. Yes, go. There's all kinds of free stuff, but don't ever let anybody steal your library card or see your library card because they will charge it up, is what the lady told me. She said they'll put DVDs and they will never bring them back and you'll be required to pay for it. So, just so you know. Um, but that's about it. Okay. I'm at Tanya's house, so I am going to get off here, and I will be, I might show her patio furniture. I'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, I'm supposed to walk around the side of Tanya's house. There's her Jeep. She just got her new Jeep. I'm like in the wood. There's her husband's pickup truck. She doesn't want me to wake her husband up, so I'm walking around in the dark. Her new patio. <gasps> oh, it's just me, Cash. Yeah. It's uh, Cash. It's just me, honey. Yeah, good boy. Look at this, Tanya Jean. No, I'm filming right now because I wanted to show you your new patio furniture, but you can't see it out here. Nope. Well, I wish you guys could see it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all done yet. Though. All right. Well, I'll show it some other time when it's. Okay, I'm back in my car. I really wanted to show you her patio furniture, but it was so dark back there that I couldn't. I got something sticky all over my hands. I don't know what it was from. Sitting out back there. I need to, when I go home, I want to look up these books on my Kindle. So I have to put it in my notes. I'm gonna sing that song. That something, something, something to my Kit Kat bar, and now I've got it like in my head. Book of the Month Club. Come back for five dollars. No thanks. Um, what is that? Is it something about Dumplin? Dumplin Diary. Oh, Dumplin Diaries. I guess that's a Goodreads account. I am. Um, Mating call West Virginia. I still have my. <laughs> I love that movie so much. The Wonderful and Wild Whites of West Virginia. Do you guys know that movie? Um, I just texted Alex. He is like still on his phone day. It has been like he's been on the phone with his friend Sarah forever. Um. 
I was like, well, I'm gonna vlog and then I'll come home. I love this chapstick so much. I cannot remember who sent it to me. It is so nice though. It's called Skins Sugar Super Blam Lip Balm. I don't know what flavor this is. It tastes kind of fruity. I cannot read it. My, my eyesight is so bad, you guys. Oh wait, that's better. Blam Tasket. It doesn't say what flavor it is. It's like, maybe it's coconut. I don't know. It tastes almost kind of like fruitier than that. Well, you want to know what, um, oh, before I take off, let me tell you. Tanya was sitting out there reading her book. Let me tell you what I am addicted to right now, okay? I don't ever play games on my phone, and I saw this on Instagram, and I downloaded it. It's called Stack Jump. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this game called Stack Jump. And um, I sat out there like, we were like, Tanya was reading her book, and she reads on her phone, and she was reading, and I was just sitting there playing stack and jump. We did that for like a half an hour. I just sat out there. We didn't talk or anything. It was so nice. Her new couch, she's like an L-shaped couch. It's so cute. And um, we just sat out there and didn't talk or anything. She read, and I played this game, and I was like, Tanya, I feel so stupid that I'm playing this game. And she's like, no, it's good for you. I go, why is it good for me that I'm playing this game? She's like, I don't know, it just is. You know, I was telling her, it's interesting, like, Alex used to always play Angry Birds. He was obsessed with Angry Birds for the longest time. But you know, I like stopped by Tanya's today at the kennel and I stopped by there on Tuesday. And I was telling her, you know, like, <clears throat> When I was working in treatment, which was 10 years ago this year was when I left, you know? And even after that, when I had my practice and I was like so full, seeing people and doing speaking engagements and stuff, like I almost was working more after than I was working when I was working in treatment. And, um, like, I would come over to Tanya's after work, and I would sit on her patio, and we'd drink a Diet Coke, you know, and stuff, and commiserate, and at that time, you know, like, she only had, like, one other person working for her with the kennel, so she was literally, I mean, she puts in so many hours with the kennel, but she was, like, I mean, it was ridiculous how many hours that she was working, and we just, like, never got to just spend time together and just relax, you know, and um, especially when you own your own business, I mean, it's, like, you take crisis calls if you're in my field back then of what I did and you know there's just or you know your day is so long by the time you get home you're so tired we didn't drive around and get found pops and stuff like that back then and I was like you know it was very deliberate like the things that I invested in financially so that I could I would have paychecks down the road that I could just you know and a lot of people are like when you talk about retiring early, I mean, I'm not retired. Like, there are still things that I do. But I started investing, like, in my late 20s in some things that I knew 20 years down the road would allow me to continue to get a paycheck without working so that I would, you know, always have constant income as I got older so I could work less if I wanted to, if that makes sense. And, um... You know, I was, but it took a long time for me to ever get to that point of where I don't really have to do a whole lot. You know, now I write books and make videos and, you know, I do a little bit of work. I do some things here and there. And, you know, I feel very, very blessed that I'm able to do that. And I was saying to her, I was like, you know, like for the first time in my life, I'm able to kind of like exhale and relax and it's just so fantastic. I feel so blessed to be where I'm at in my life right now. Like, you know, like, I know a lot of people started working way before I ever did. You know, my God, my husband was working in high school, you know, early high school. Most of my friends did, but I didn't, you know. But from the point that I started working at 22, almost 23 years old, like, 
until about five years ago, I just never stopped. And it was, and it wasn't 30 or 40 hour weeks. It was 60, 70 hour weeks, you know? And, um, like I got real emotional leaving Tanya's today. I was like, for the first time in my life, I'm actually at a point where I can, like, go visit my friend during the middle of the day or, you know, enjoy a beautiful day outside. And I feel so blessed. I feel like the rewards of my work over 20-plus years are starting to finally pay off of all of this stuff that I did, you know? And um, there's just a lot of work that went into me getting where I'm at today. And, you know, part of it, I think, is... This is what I was going to say. A lot of people are like, well, how are you semi-retired for your age? Well, I don't, I don't extravagantly spend money. I just don't, you know? I mean, if anything, we spend money on like, uh, trips, you know, taking trips together and we really find a trip that is cost effective and, you know, like, even, like, I think people didn't understand this, like, with the washer and dryer thing, like, why I put it off for so long. Well, part of why I put it off for so long was because until we had credit cards paid off, I didn't want to get a washer and dryer because we were spending very minimal amount of money at the laundromat. And so, um, I didn't want to get a washer and dryer until, like, I knew I could go and afford it, you know? And that's how... We, Alex and I are, we're very smart, like, with the money stuff, because we both came from two relationships where people weren't smart, and I wasn't smart in my past relationship with money. I just wasn't, you know? And so, I mean, from very early on, it was a disturbance. One, two, three, police officers just sitting out there. Oh, my God. It was from a very early, you know, part of our relationship, like... I'd say like an hour and a half, an hour and a half, a year and a half into our relationship, it was conscious decision of how we were going to approach things, you know, like if we went out, to, we did not go out to dinner back then, you know, we ate lean cuisines and we, you know, would get a big lasagna at Costco and we would make it last three or four days, you know, and, or we would make a pot of chili and it would... Alex would take it to work every day for lunch, and that's what I would eat for lunch. You know, we would make that pot of chili or a pot of pasta. We would make it last, you know, a whole week. And if we went out to dinner for a date night, you know, we went to Applebee's and we did the two for 20. I mean, I can't tell you how many times we did that. Or we would, you know, we would never get pizza unless we had coupons, and then we would get, like, you know, the thing where you got two, you know, extra large pizzas with breadsticks and everything, you know, for $20 or something like that. And then we would save the pizza for lunch, you know, or dinner the next night for the next two nights or whatever. And everything, I mean, I never went to Starbucks back in the day. I mean, it was all of it very, very conscious to save, like, every cent that we had, you know, like, it was... We knew we wanted to get to a point where we didn't worry about that stuff. And even, like, Alex is a big shopper, you know? And even today, like, he's such a clearance shopper. Like, he, he'll find an outfit that he likes, like, in an Instagram picture. And then he'll, like, search the shit out of it online at these websites like ASOS and other websites that he likes. Until he finds something that looks similar to it. And then he'll buy it for, like, a fifth of the price that it would be originally, you know? Like, he just doesn't spend that kind of money and, like, the, the things that he has that are nice, like, the Louis Vuitton belt that I was talking about earlier, well, that was a gift from, like, Christmas, the first year that we were together, that he's, like, he keeps it in a box, like, in a really nice, you know? I don't know. It's just, like, a lot of people are always interested when I talk about the financial stuff, you know, and I talk about getting out of debt and all those kinds of things, and it's just, like, you know, it's very, it, you have to figure out what you want your life to look like. See if that's realistic and how you're going to get there. And the reality is that when Alex and I got together, and even before him, you know, when I was working, I knew it wasn't realistic that I was going to have, you know, $5 million saved by the time that I was 45. You know, I always knew that between 45 and 50, I really wanted to slow down. So when I say semi-retired, what I mean by that is slow down. Like, not work, as, not work a 40-hour work week is what I meant. You know, be able to go over to my friend's house during the middle of the day. Call my own shots. That's what I wanted to do. 
and I'm there, you know? But there was a lot of shit that I had to do to get here, you know? When I paid off my credit cards, I cut them up. I don't buy things I don't need, you know? Um, like, even today, going to Lush and Kiehl's, like, it was really hard for me. Like, it's really hard for me to buy that stuff. And, and you know, like, I'm even inside, I'm like, Peter, like, you've done very good. You, It's okay to go, like, buy yourself something every once in a while. But I just don't, you know? And today, we really spend our money on going out to eat and going to... Um, on trips, but like, and we, and that was a conscious decision that we made a couple years ago. Alex said, I think instead of us going out a lot, like I was already not going out a lot because I think instead of us going out a lot and going out to eat a lot, we need to take that money and start saving it for trips. So like, let's just say like this week, if we would, like we typically go out to dinner two or three nights a week. Well, it's Friday and we went to dinner on Sunday was the last time that we went to dinner and we went to Patashu for brunch. Did we even go to Patashu for brunch last Sunday? No, because we went to my brother-in-law's house for his birthday. So I can't... Sometime last weekend we went out to dinner. God, how long has it been since we went out to dinner? So I'll take $100 and I put it into our trip account. That's what we do because we know that we're going to save that money, right? So a minimum of $100 a week is typically what we think. If we don't go to, out to dinner for that week, we take $100 and we put it in there. If I go to the, if I go, if I have enough money to go to the casino, and let's say if I'm taking $120, which is average to what I take to the casino, if I'm going to take $120 to the casino, and I know I have that amount of money to blow, I take another $120 and I put it in my savings. Um, because if I have enough money to go blow like that, then I should be able to put the same amount of money into savings, and it's just how I've thought, you know, through time. And I don't, like, I'm, like, really low on cologne. I have one very, very nice cologne um, that somebody was nice enough, you know, to give me as a gift. And other than that, like, I'm so low on my cologne. And I'm, like, I've been really kind of, like, one spray and, like, doing all this, you know, for, like, weeks. Excuse me with my other ones, and I was like, just go and buy some cologne. It's more cost-effective that way anyway, you know? But, like, I'm such a penny-pincher when it comes to that stuff. But, and Tanya and I were talking about that tonight. It's like I'm almost afraid to kind of get out of that mindset because I did back in the day. I would go to Walmart and blow $150, no questions asked. You know, I didn't even think about it. On shit that I didn't need, you know? I don't, there's so many things I used to buy that I don't need, you know? And what was really hard for me was when I was paying off my debt, years after I had even used one of those credit cards, you know, I would be like, I need, Alex just texted me, I need to pull in here and see what he said. Um, I would be like, I'm paying on bullshit that I bought at Walmart five years ago that I don't even know what it is, you know what I mean? So now when I go into a store, with it, whether it's with Tanya or by myself, I ask myself, do I really need this? Like, is this something that I really need? And, like, even when I did the Target haul for my channel, that was so hard for me, you guys, because I bought stuff that I didn't really need, you know? And, I, I mean, and I was like, I'm doing this for a video, but, like, this is really hard for me. I'm, like, buying things I don't need, you know? And I have that so programmed in my head. Okay, let's see what Alex said. I'm in the middle of a parking lot. <laughs> Hope you had fun talking to Sarah. Um, he's not going boating now tomorrow. So anyway, um, but that would be like one of the things I think, like program, when people ask me like about money, it's like, It's really weird, you guys. Me talking about, like, financial issues on my channel is, honest to God, one of the number one emails I get, one of the number one comments I get from people when they say things like, can you talk to us more about, like, how to get rid of debt and things like that? And it's like, oh, my God, somebody is in that Pizza Hut cleaning up. And I'm like, could you please be open? I would love some breadsticks right now. Oh, my God. Um, 
No, no, no. Shame, shame. Know your name. Um, so anyway, I love breadsticks so much. Um, but honest to God, you guys, like, first of all, let me tell you, okay? <laughs> Do you want to hear this or are you bored? Okay, I'm going to tell you anyway. You know, like, I think everything that you need to know about getting out of debt and saving money and being at your financial, I mean, first of all, listen, okay, you have to be realistic about what your financial dream is. When I said that I wanted to be semi-retired between 45 and 50, I knew that did not mean that I would not be doing anything. Does that make sense? I, I knew that. And I knew that there were going to be things that I had to do that were going to be continued source of income. So... I just didn't want to be bound to a 40 hour a week job. So as long as I had enough money to pay my bills and be able, and I mean, I wrote this out. Okay. I wrote this out on a piece of like, you know, on a notebook, I wrote down when I was like third, I think it was my 30th birthday it was either 30 or 31. Cause 31 was a harder year for me. My 30th or 31st birthday. I wrote down where I wanted to be by 45. And I have to tell you, like, I'm like, other than like my body and things like that, well, my body at 30 was good, so it probably wasn't even on the list, but like, I'm like 70%, 80% where I want to be with my life. You know, the things that are lacking, like me not having more books out, are my fault, nobody else's. It's my lack of dedication to getting that shit done, and I know that, right? But you know, I wrote down what I wanted my life to look like at like 45, and um, it was things like, I mean, I very detailed wrote down what that would look like to be semi-retired because my, my parents had a lot of friends that semi-retired early, you know? The difference was that they had a lot of family money. I wasn't getting any family money, okay? Like, I just knew that that was not going to be my case. It just, you know, that I was going to be getting large checks from my parents. That just wasn't the case. So I knew that. And... So I knew that whatever I wanted to do, I was going to have to do it on my own. Which the payoff is greater, I think, when you do it on your own sometimes. But Tanya and I were talking about that tonight too. So I wrote down like what I wanted this to look like. And then I kind of started coming up with a realistic plan. I knew it wasn't going to be that I was going to have a million dollars by the time I was 45. Okay. Or 5 million or whatever. Like I had to be realistic about what I could achieve by that point, given the financial resources that I had, what I could make and what I could set aside. That was important. I also did not think that along the way I was going to get this huge amount of freaking debt that I did, which set me back three years. Uh, honest to God, that's me owning my truth. So in retrospect, it would have been almost better for me, I think, because part of the reason why it took me three years is because the whole time that I was paying off that debt, I was setting money aside for savings, but it would have been better for me just to have paid it out front and not put any money in savings for three years, if that makes sense. I would have got it paid off quicker. The reality is, my dad said this to me one time, if you have debt, you have no savings because you need to pay off your debt. So, <clears throat> I mean, I live within my means and I am out of debt. Like, that's fantastic. I have like a little bit of debt, like ma completely manageable debt from month to month and that's it. Um, but you know, like, it was also like, a, okay, so I had to have a realistic idea of what I wanted my financial goal to look like, but then I had to have a change of mindset too. Like, honestly, like I would always be happy. Like if I was in the store with Tanya and like we were like, I, I've never been the person that like, I mean, I love clothes. Don't get me wrong. I used to go to Broader Bowl Vintage, this vintage store here in town. And I would drop, it was easy to go in there and spend $40 and get five shirts or six shirts or something like that. Cause their, their clothes aren't expensive. I would go in there every Saturday. I mean, Alex said something to me the other day. He's like, you have so many clothes in there that have tags on them. I'm like, they're all from Broader Bowl Vintage. They all say like five or $10 on them, but it's true. I have like so many Western shirts with pearl buttons that don't fit and so they're still hanging in the closet. But if I ever do, or when I ever do lose the weight, I will be wearing those shirts because they are fantastic. So anyway, um, but you know, like I had to kind of 
like I'd be so happy in the store on Saturdays, like picking out my outfit to go out for the night, and I'd buy like five or six shirts, you know, or a pair of jeans or a pair of shoes that day. But then what I realized over time was that like it would make me happy in the moment, and then like five minutes later, it didn't really make me any, it didn't make me any happier. And I think it's also part of my addiction, you know, feeling that emptiness. And then when I would go with Tanya and we would go to Walmart and I buy, you know, like five candles. I still am like this with candle wax because I have to stay away from the candle wax aisle. But I buy like five candles, you know, and then like some cute little plaque and like two t-shirts and, you know, every time. And this is two or three nights a week and I'd be spending, you know, $100 a time. Well, I was making the money that I could do that. And that's how I justified it in my head. I justified it saying to myself, well, you make enough money so you can do it, not... Or I would say, you work your ass off, you deserve it, okay? Not saying to myself, you make enough money, put it aside for later so you can enjoy your life later. Or, you know, you work hard, you deserve it. Instead of saying, you work hard, put it into savings so at one point you won't have to work as hard. And for me, what it was, was having to change several mantras in my head, okay? That when I went into a store, I buy things I need, not things I definitely want. Um, and I do buy things from time to time that I want. That's bullshit if I said I didn't. But I don't, I typically don't go into a store, except for if it's a bookstore. Bookstores I go in and I wander around. But I typically don't go shopping because I can get in trouble shopping. I don't go shopping unless, like, you know, I got these, um, Birkenstock, these black Birkenstock. Oh, I've got my flip flops on. Forget it. I got those black Birkenstock plastic uh, uh, sandals. They're so comfortable, you guys. They look so good with everything that I have that I was like, buy another pair, buy them in another color. And I got on Birkenstock.com uh, last night and I was like, no, you do not need another pair of these. Wait till they're not usable anymore and then get another pair. You don't need another pair right now. And that's kind of how I talk myself out of those things right now, you know? But I had to really train myself and I don't know that I even realized it until one day Tanya and I were walking out of uh, Meyer, and she said, you never buy anything anymore. And I was like, what do you mean? She goes, I still spend like $100 when I go in here. She's like, but you used to like go into Walmart and you buy uh, some new shower gel that you smelled or, you know, a different kind of toothpaste or, you know, a CD or a book. She's like, you just don't do that anymore. I go, I don't buy things I don't need. And she, and I said, you know, I have enough crap around the house that I don't need anyway. I don't need to add to it. And she's like, I'm just really impressed. She's like, you used to spend so much money on shit. You'd, I, and I would. I would spend so much shit on money on shit I didn't need, you know? So that was, like, the first thing. The second thing was paying myself forward. And that meant that, like, okay, like what I talked about with the casino. Well, another way of doing that was if it's a Wednesday night. And I do this all the time. Like, I still do this all the time. So if it's a Wednesday night and Tanya and I are going to Meyer, and I come out of there... And, I, and back in the day, I would have spent $100, and I have $100 to spend, and I spent 20 I take 80 and I put it into my savings. Because it's money that I was going to spend anyway in my head, and it goes into savings. And 10 and $20 and $80 and $5, you know, every, like, time I would get cash from my aunt, put it into savings, you know? My dad doesn't ever give me money. He doesn't give me any kind of money as a gift, ever. The only time he's helped me in the near past history was uh, when my mom passed away. So 10 years ago. But, like, he and my stepmom, like, because of being an addict and how, like, whenever they would give me money, I would use it on drugs and stuff and alcohol. They don't give me money. For presents, at least. Like, gifts. They never do. So, but my aunt would, you know. And so I would... She'd give me $100, you know, she'd give Alex and I each $100 for Christmas, and I'd put it into savings. And over time, that money adds up, you know? Any, any casino winnings that I ever get go right into savings. So that's the other thing. Slowly build your savings. Have a retirement fund. That's vital, you know? Even if you're putting a little bit in it at a time. And change your mindset of how you spend money. You know, Alex was online shopping the other night and he was like, tell me to not do what I'm doing. And he was on his phone and I go, well, what are you doing? Shopping? And he goes, yeah. And I go, stop shopping. But like back in the day, that would have been so hard for me. He's like, I know, but there's so many cute clothes on this ASOS website. I was like, he was looking at bathing suits and I was like, 
You have literally 20 bathing suits in there that you buy from music festivals and everybody. You don't need it. He's like, I know, but they're all on sale. They're real cheap. I said, then get them if you want. Like, I mean, <laughs> but you don't need them, you know? That doesn't mean that you don't buy things that you want. Okay, I want to make that very, very clear. What happens over time is that you become able to discern the difference between your wants and your needs, okay? So for example, if I go into a bookstore, I probably in my house right now, okay, and I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna lowball this. I bet I have, I bet I have 250 to 300 books that I have never read in my house, okay? Some of them which I've had for years and years and years, yes, of course, that are in my basement. I do not need to buy another book, okay? That, I think that goes without saying. But there are so many books that are new that I want to read, right? <clears throat> my plan is to go through those and either donate them to the library, the ones I'm not going to read, or sell them back to half price books. That's been my plan for a while now. It's just so overwhelming to me when I look at all of them. So anyway, um, this car kind of came out of nowhere. But, um, oh my God, am I at 28 minutes already? Lord. Um, <clears throat> so if I go to the bookstore, like today I went to the bookstore and I was looking at books and I saw like two books that I wanted and I was like, okay, like, are you going to read these if anytime soon if you get them or are they just going to end up in a booktube haul video and sit up on the counter? And I was like, I don't need them. I don't need them. So <clears throat> I put them back and I didn't get them. So I really think it through. But if I go there and it's like a book that I, like Dumplin' by Julie Murphy that I really want, I'm getting it. You know what I mean? And I'm not gonna feel bad about it <clears throat> because you have to allow yourself to continue to buy some things. It's like, people always say to us, you should get rid of cable, it's a waste of money. It's not a waste of money to us. We use cable all the time. We love cable. We watch all kinds, I watch a movie every day on cable. I get my money's worth out of my cable. You know what I mean? So. For us, it's not a waste of money to have it. Like, we enjoy our cable. Um, and you have to know the difference between your wants and your desires. And, you know, honestly, it was just a change of thought. You know, I read all the Dave Ramsey books. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I started, you know, just, like, taking in the layman stuff. I think everybody knows everything that you need to know commonsensically about saving money. Okay, this is going to stop, so I'm going to get off here. I'm going to let my camera cool, and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Um... <clears throat> it is so nice, you guys. I could drive around with my windows open and just listen to my audiobook all night long, of which I only have an hour and 20 minutes left of. So, um, you know, I really don't want to come across as preachy. I was actually thinking about this while the camera was cooling down. I think the one thing that really, like, helped me the most, honestly, with getting out of debt and saving money and getting where I'm at now, this is honest to God. When I say remain teachable, I think that might be the number one piece was when I was able to kind of admit my faults, I found a few people that I really respect how they handle money. One being my father. He's very smart with money. And, you know, Tanya's husband was another one. And then some friends in my life, you know, that are, like, Melissa and Jason's husband, like, Melissa's husband, Jason, like, is very, very smart about money things. And, um, so, you know, I just really started to listen to what these people said and, um, the advice that they gave me and the recommendations that they gave me. And I started to slowly put into place the things they told me to do. And um, I didn't get arrogant and cocky about it and act like I knew everything because I didn't. And, you know, slowly, like Melissa is so good at like saving money, like coupon shopping and like deal shopping. I mean, she, she very much is, you know, and I'll never forget when I said to her, like, I mean, obviously, Melissa and Jason do very well. And I was like, and she has, I mean, 
she has some very nice things. Like she has several Chanel purses. You know, she has you know a Celine purse. I mean, she's got some very nice bags because she loves bags. You know, she's got a vintage love bracelet. And I'm like, why do you, are you such a penny pincher when it comes to this stuff? And she's, I said, you obviously, it doesn't matter. You can afford these nice things. And she goes, because I penny pinch means that we, it allows us to be able to do those things. And see that like was such a mindset for me that, okay, so if I cut down in other areas, then that means I can afford the trip. I can afford the book, you know? But I had to shut my mouth and listen. And I had, you know, shut my mouth and open my ears and start to listen to what people that were successful with money were telling me to do. And I had to take people's advice and remain teachable, you know? My dad doesn't use credit cards. He never has used credit cards. He hates them. He uses cash. And if he doesn't have his cash for it or, you know, on his debit card, he doesn't buy He doesn't buy it. He always has cash, you know? And, and my dad doesn't even carry that much cash with him because he's always like, I don't need that much stuff, you know? He's, I think, at any given time, probably has 100 or 200 bucks on him. But he's like, you know what? I don't, there's not really that much that I need. Go to the grocery store on the weekend? What, you know? And he always taught me, if you don't have, if, if you can't afford it with the cash that you have, you don't need it. And there, it's true, you know? Like, and I remember when I got my first credit card, my dad, it's like so dark over there and it's like dark anyway, so I can't really see, but it's almost like it's like raining or something. It's supposed to rain tonight. You know, my dad said to me when I got my first credit card, I said, I was so excited about it. And he was like, credit cards are dangerous for you. And I said, why? And he goes, because the way that you're going to see it is that it's this unlimited amount of money that you have to spend. He goes, you don't have a real, a realistic view of what credit really is. And he goes, credit is like, you know, you, like if you have a thousand dollar credit limit, you're thinking I have a thousand dollars to spend. He goes, but you don't have a thousand dollars to pay that back. He goes, because if you did, it'd be smarter to just go in there and buy it instead of paying interest on what he goes, you don't have any idea of how really, you don't really get it, right? Well, I don't know that I even really got it until 30. It took me a very long time to kind of get it, you know? And then I was so way over my head. So I really had to remain teachable and shut my mouth and listen to what people were telling me and just start doing what they told me to do, you know? I learned the savings account trick actually from my mom who would, you know, put $5 in here and, you know, when I was growing up, we'd always do the Christmas club. <laughs> we would always do the Christmas club when I was growing up. You know, I put $5 a week in the Christmas club and by October, I had all my money for my little Christmas presents, you know, and that's how I bought Christmas presents. Do you guys know what the Christmas club is? They still do it at the bank. I should do it. Like, I should do it this year. So the Christmas club is you go and you set up a Christmas club at the bank, your local bank, and then you say you're going to put so much money in it a week or a month. I think it's a week. So you put, you can put any amount you want to put in there. You can put $10,000, I guess, but, um, but you can put like five or 20 or whatever. And then you set a date of when you're going to take it out, which is usually sometime like at the end of October, beginning of November. And then at that point, whatever's in there and has earned a little interest, like a savings account, you get to take out. It was fun. I had my little book and I would write in there like how much I had. It was, you know, and you don't think about it. And what's nice about it then is that, you know, then when Christmas time rolls around, you got all your money for your Christmas presents. You don't have to worry about it. with like my car insurance and uh, um, what else do I do it with? Some other things like other like stuff that I pay like twice a year because I don't pay my car insurance every month. I pay it twice a year. So I have it divided into what that is every six months and then I take that amount each month and I put it into a, a savings account that I have just for that stuff, those bills. And it comes to like a total of like $200 a month for all of these things that I owe. And then when those bills come up, I just take the money right out of the savings account and I have it and I don't have to worry about like, if that's a month that like I don't have a lot of money, then how the hell am I gonna pay my car insurance, which you have to pay, because I've got it sitting aside, you know?
it's all just common sense. And then that's what I realized after time was that like financial trouble is all just common sense, you know? I will also say this, um, and this is gonna sound stupid. I have sometimes the 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 least amount of money that I had in my life, I was the happiest I ever was. You know, it's like I didn't want for a lot. I was very happy just to pay my rent and my bills and, you know, make a pot of coffee at home with whatever coffee I had a coupon for at the grocery store and, you know, like, get pizza with my friends and split it three ways. And, I mean, I didn't spend a lot of money and I was the happiest I, you know, it's the lowest paid I ever was. You know, when I was a tech in treatment, like, that was some of the best luck times of my entire, I mean, I had an apartment with my boyfriend and my best friend at the time and, you know, I, we come home and we go to the gym that was free at the apartment complex and work out and go to the pool and take a night swim and come back and <clears throat> go to Blockbuster and rent a dollar horror movie and get a pizza and split it three ways. You know, a cheap night, you know? I remember my friend Chris and I and I, we used to always get those orange slice candies because they were like a dollar and that, and we would share them sitting there watching the movie. You know, I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to have a lot of money to have a great life. I think it's a real misconception that we've like sold out on in our society that like this Instagram world and even YouTube plays, YouTube plays into it a little bit, you know, that you got to have this extravagant jet setter, Louis Vuitton, you know, life to have a life of quality and it's just, it's absolute bullshit. So, I don't know, that's at least what I think about the world. What do you think about the world? Every time I'm sitting at this light, there's always a car that comes next to me that's super loud. But you know, my mom used to say that too. She'd say sometimes the happiest your dad and I ever were when we were, like was when we were first dating and you know, we, didn't have any money and it just like you didn't worry about a whole lot you know as long as you could pay your bills and I think that I still have that mentality today that as long as I can pay my bills like honestly I get so excited when the bills are paid for the month you know I'm just kind of like oh god I mean I'm sure I'm not alone out there with you guys I mean I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that feel the same way When I was making seven twelve an hour, working fifty hours a week in treatment as a tech, I loved that job. Like that was one of my favorite jobs ever. I can remember people would say to me all the time, "How do you do what you do? Like it's such hard work." I loved it, you know. Like we were doing good work, and I like even if even if it was a night that we just went in and watched a movie for you know rec night or something, and took the kids to a meeting it was like a good night you know it was fun and there was always three of us working and we were cracking jokes and it just was fun you know like I don't know my dad used to always say to me don't you know don't sell out on the hype that in life the more money you make the better off you do you start thinking like, oh, I have, okay, so I have one TV now. He, this is the exact thing that he told me. He goes, don't fall into this hype. That when you have one TV and then you're doing a little bit better, you think, oh, now I need a TV for my bedroom because I already have one in the living room. So you go and you buy a, bed, a TV for the bedroom, right? Okay. But now you have a little bit nicer TV in the bedroom than you do in the living room. So the next time you get some more money, you're like, I want a little bit, I want another I want a better TV than the one we have in our living room. So you get rid of the, you know, the TV in your living room or you put it in your basement and you get a nicer TV, a pricier, more expensive. So it's quality versus quantity, see? But now that you have that nicer TV, the one that you have in your bedroom is a shitty TV. So now you got to get a nicer TV there. So down the road when you're making a little bit more money, you upgrade that and you get a quality TV and it goes back and forth. Quality, quantity, quality, quantity, right? Before you have six TVs in your house and you aren't watching any of them. And it's ridiculous. And he would say, don't fall into the hype. Know what you need. And know what you want. And there's a difference between the two. And that doesn't mean, like I say, that you don't sometimes buy or, you know, indulge in the things that you want. That's okay, too. 
Just make sure it's something that you really want in that moment, that it's worth it to you. The other thing I would say, the big, big piece of advice is that, and I have a lot of friends that live this life, but I will tell you that the people I surround myself closest with, like Tanya and her husband, and Melissa and her, and her husband Jason, the people that are close, and Aaron and her husband, the people that are closest to me in my life do not do this, and that is live above their means. I don't surround myself with people that live above their means because if they do it and I'm doing it, then I fall in and they're like, oh, let's fly to Vegas for the weekend. I'm like, well, we don't have, you know, they're like, oh, put it on a credit card. Don't worry about it. And then all of a sudden I'm living that life. Live within your means and you won't be worried about money a lot. You know, your problems with money are realistic then. And I have realistic money problems today. I don't have like, oh my God, what am I going to ever do? I don't sometimes, I don't know what some of my friends do. I guess, you know. I don't know. But I don't want to be dictated by money in my life. I want to be able to do the things I want to do and enjoy my life and, you know. So, you guys are like, what a boring conversation talking about money. Oh my God. See, but the thing is, it's not boring to me because I could talk about it with my friends and I still continue to learn things all the time, you know? Like right now, I'm trying to, like, I'm real close to paying off this car and I'm looking at how much money I have to set aside each month. I'm going to keep on driving this car. I don't care. And I'm going to see, I'm going to set down, I'm going to set aside my, like, what my car note is a month plus a little extra. It just started raining. Plus a little extra so that I can outright buy a car or put down a really good lump sum on my next car. And then I don't have to be, you know, indebted to a car payment. That's what Dave Ramsey talks about. And um, I mean, he's got uh, Total Money Makeover. It's such a great book. Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. And he talks about that in there, you know? And I'm like, okay, Peter, you've, you've, talked about this, you've said things, and now your next car, do it. Do what he says, you know, and I'm going to do it. The next car, that's what I'm going to do. And I don't, and you know, I don't need a brand new car. I don't need, I, I want a Jeep Wrangler. That's probably what my next car is going to be. I don't need a brand new car. It doesn't have to be brand new. It can be old. It can be used. I just don't want a lot of miles on it, and I want it to be in good working shape. That's what I want. And something fun that I want, you know? And I don't need it tomorrow. I can wait. This this car, I love, I drive a little Ford Escape. Got a great sunroof, great sound system. I love it. You know, Sirius Radio, I don't need any more than that. It's great gas mileage. So, anyway. All right, you guys, I'm going to get off here. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. I promise I won't do the money talk for a while. I'm not a money, I'm not Ty Lopez. I'm not talking about money on here. Every time I mention Ty Lopez in my video, I get Ty Lopez ads on my videos. And people are always like, oh my God, I got a five minute Ty Lopez ad. If you don't know who Ty Lopez is, he's that guy that uh, promises he can teach you how to be a billionaire. Except for that he supposedly uh, rents all the houses and the cars that he shows in his videos that says that he owns. I don't know if that's true or not. I've never watched his thing, but... <laughs> I guess that's another way to get out of debt, you know? Sell people on your program. <laughs> your financial program. Oh, God. Maybe that's what I should do. I don't know. Anyway, no. I love you guys. I hope you are having a fantastic weekend. Um, I'm trying to keep on reminding people of this. If you are in my uh, book club, Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are doing a discussion about I'll Be Gone in the Dark. I'm getting ready to finish it right now. I have an hour and 20 minutes left. I think that's how much I have left. And I'm going to finish listening to it right now and get very scared. And yeah, I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.